Why are earthquakes so difficult to predict as compared to other types of natural disasters? Hashtag geophysics. Right, earthquakes. You know, the, the Indian subcontinent is an earthquake prone region. It's not part of the belt of fire. The belt of fire is something that uh, runs through Indonesia. Japan is part of it. And you know, it's the entire rim of fire where you have all the volcanoes and it's an earthquake prone region. The Andamans is part of that. We have a couple of, at least one volcano, two volcanoes, I believe in the Andaman uh, archipelago region, you know, volcanoes on Indian territory. One is the Narokandam, one is the Barren Island volcano, right? So, India actually is an earthquake-prone region if you look at a larger time period. You see it uh, decade upon decade, you will not see much happening except for smallish earthquakes. But if you look at it century upon century, that way, you're going to have massive earthquakes. Especially in the Himalayan region, which is still rising. It's very tectonically unstable. The Himalayas are still rising in height. Every year, it's like a few centimeters you know, a couple of centimeters or so, which seems to be very, very small from our perspective, but overall it's big, you know, so they're going to ri- rise much higher in the future. And we have earthquakes in the Himalayan region. We, there was an earthquake, I don't know, two, three decades ago in the uh, Uttarakashi region. And then more recently, there was a massive earthquake in Nepal. So it would suddenly make uh, great sense to uh, develop means of predicting earthquakes because earthquakes can be very damaging. Uh, they obviously uh, destroy property, they destroy infrastructure, but also human life, right? So I'm sure you cannot move infrastructure away. It's all built upon the land. You can't move infrastructure, but you can certainly save human lives if you're able to predict the earth, uh, earthquakes. Even if you have a lead time of 30 minutes, you can save a lot of lives if you know that that an earthquake is going to happen. So why is it so difficult to predict earthquakes? Well, the reason for that is because earthquakes uh, originate in subterranean tectonic activity. So below the surface of the earth, we have various layers of the earth, right? Let's, Let's look it up. What are the layers? Layers of earth. Let me put that on the screen. Where are we? Here we are. Mm, layers of earth that's the google search i'm doing and hopefully it will show us something interesting so okay these are the various layers you have the earth's crust you have the mantle the outer core the inner core so and uh below the crust you have the mantle which essentially is is magma magma is what uh, comes out to the surface as lava right that's what we see uh, that erupts from volcanoes and then there is i don't know all kinds of other stuff uh, so you have the crust, the upper mantle, mantle, outer core, inner core, and so on. So the crust is the solid layer. The mantle, the upper and lower mantle, that's the magma layer. That's where you have molten rock at very high temperatures. It's so hot that the rock melts. And that's the lava that comes out of volcanoes. So, and on top of that, you have the, the, uh, the solid crust, which moves around. So inside the earth, there is this entire ocean of la- of magma and the earth's crust essentially floats on that the the magma is quite thick it's quite viscous right it's like imagine the difference between, between water and honey honey is much thicker right so magma is even thicker than that it's molten rock so the earth's crust floats around on that and you have all these uh, tectonic uh, activity you know tectonic plates that um, you have subduction or uh, tectonic plates that go under other plates and some plates collide and all that and it is all of this activity that gives rise to volcanism as well as earthquakes now the thing is that we don't know much of what's happening underground we can't see it and uh, the deepest people have drilled underground is just thin holes that go back about i don't know 10 15 less than 15 kilometers yeah and uh, the magma layer is way below that so we don't know what's happening under the earth's surface we don't even know what's under the oceans you know much of it so because we have almost no data about what the conditions are in the magma layer and all the tectonic activ- activity, that's why we are unable to predict earthquakes with any accuracy. Now, people use a variety of means. You know, they, they observe the behavior of animals, of birds, of, of fish and, uh, and cats and dogs and all that. And uh, typically what happens is that before an, earth- an earthquake occurs, there is some kind of uh, activity, you know, When it comes to birds and animals, they are able to hear sounds that we can't hear. For instance, there is this very popular euphemism called dog whistle, right? Uh, 
so dog whistle is a whistle that is, that vibrates in the ultra sound range it's what dogs can hear but we can't hear even bats can hear that so when it comes to various uh, the tectonic activity there are certain vibrations that occur which could be either very low frequency vibrations or high frequency vibrations most likely these will be low frequency vibrations and some animals and birds can sense that they can detect it and when some such thing happens it it looks like they can actually tell that something bad is going to happen like an earthquake and they become uneasy and all that so if you know what patterns of behavior to look for look for among animals and birds then maybe you would know that maybe an earthquake is impending but that's a very uh, rough and approximate and inaccurate way of trying to predict earthquakes ideally you would want to know roughly within an hours time when an earthquake could happen you know maybe like in in 24 hours there could be an earthquake that sort of thing so uh, because we have so little data of what's happening below the earth surface that's why it's so difficult to predict earthquakes 